I'm chatting with Nathan Beard today, who teaches painting at Dunedin Fine Art Center. So, Nathan, you're a working artist. You exhibit and you sell your work locally and nationally, and you've recently exhibited in Japan. So, when did you decide to become a professional artist? So, I have a, an oddly specific date. Is February 3rd, 2013 was my was my launch date. Um, I I. Uh, when we moved to Florida, I was uh, actually thinking about going to get my master's in environmental education, or sorry, environmental science. And then we had our, our daughter and I changed my mind and, and decided to get back into art again. And um, I promised my wife that I would start marketing my work, ready or not, on February 3rd, 2013. Wow, that's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> so your class is called Wetlands to Studio. Yeah. Can you tell me about the class and what students will be learning? Yeah, so um, I think the class is um, kind of unique in a way where actually the first day of class, which my class is on a Saturday morning, um, we meet at Hammock Park, which is just a, a small walk away uh, from the Art Center. We meet there and we take reference photos for the paintings and drawings or whatever we'll be making, mixed media, in the studio. So that first day is, is actually really fun. We get to know each other. We walk around the park. Um, there's lots of canals there. And, and um, so I teach you how to kind of focus in on the shoreline. And that's what the class is about. It's not about panoramic landscape painting or anything like that. It's about focusing on intimate um, scenes of the shoreline. And what we're doing in the class is we're then taking those photos and we're trying to translate or transform our photographs and so you're thinking about all the all the textures um, in the water we have leaves in the water so maybe there's indications of things underwater and then we have uh, shadows and reflections on the water and then we have the plants on the shoreline it's where all these things converge you get this really interesting mixture of realism and abstraction and that's kind of what we're after because then when we come into the studio, we're going to be working on the floor. Um, you know, we can work on easels, but a lot of times when we get started, we'll work on the floor and we'll do pouring. And we do, it's hard to see, but a lot of splattering. And what we're trying to do is like, instead of drawing or painting a stick or a leaf, we try to ask ourselves, in what other way can we make this um, shape or color or form by throwing paint or um, using our hands and psh, psh, psh. so it's, it's very hands-on um, and for that reason um, the folks that take my class would probably need to have some experience with acrylic painting um, and some experience with drawing not in t not in terms of like rendering something realistically but just the sort of um, basic knowledge of composition and the canvases you have here are very large. Is that the, around the size you want students to be working? So the reason we work on large canvases in my class is, is because I feel that it helps you um, it be a little bit more risk taking. You have a lot of surface to cover. Sometimes that scares people. Once you get over that, you know, and we're talking about splattering and pouring, you can really kind of let it go here. Um, so the, the big paintings mean that you're moving your whole body so that's important in the class. And then, you know, small paintings, you get zero, really zeroed in on, on doing this kind of thing. And, and we want more gestural, um, searching, um, a, a, more of a searching a kind of approach. So you see the paintings here. This one's uh, more realistic than, than this one. And then I, I brought this piece in too, which is maybe even a little bit more finished. Um, so we're looking at interesting formats. We're looking at, um, the, whereas these two have a lot of grasses in them and shallow water, this is more of an open water with the, with the um, water lettuce floating across it, sunset kind of um, coloration. But again, when we're looking really up close, you see a lot of splattering. And, and that's something that I do before I leave each painting session. I empty my palette onto the surface to give myself something to cover up next time I come in. And you work mostly in acrylic um, 
but can students work in whatever medium they're comfortable with? In this class, you can do anything you want. If you wanted to paint on photographs, you could paint on photographs. If you want to do collage, you can do collage. You can do uh, paper, you know, different kind of papers. It really doesn't matter because the point is not to render these scenes realistically. The point is to approach art making in a, in a more fearless kind of fashion and to translate what you're looking at rather than, to, you know, copy what you're looking at in the photograph. Um, part of the first session after we come back from the photographs, there's a couple of drawing exercises. So if somebody only wanted to do drawings in this class, they could do just drawings, that's fine. We do a couple of drawing exercises where we flip negative and positive, and it really gets you to thinking about less about, you know, leaf and water and more about how all of these things interlock and interweave together. Very interesting. Um, so do you think that observing nature can inspire artists to paint or draw in a way that they might not otherwise attempt? Definitely, and I can speak to what some of my, my past students have told me. You know, after this class, they say, I'll never look at the water the same again. Because, you know, here we're not just looking at water and, like I said, a panoramic landscape. We're looking at how these different layers um, all interact in a very small kind of space. And to me, it's sort of like looking at the, at the cosmos all in one, in one picture. You have the reflection of the sky that you can see on the surface of the water, but you can still see through the water. Um, and then you see things dancing on the water. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this very small space. And for example, this, this painting is taken from um, a puddle near a culvert in um, Brooker Creek Preserve, mm -hmm. which was about this big. So here we have this giant painting made from, in real space, you know, this scene is about this big. So this is the kind of transformation that can happen in, in this class. Very cool. So what's the atmosphere like in your class? Is it very formal or are people having fun? Um, it's not formal at all. <laughs> we, we come in and um, I would say before each, each session, we have kind of a, a what am I going to do today? You know, break, like 10 minute break. You know, what am I going to do today? And I, um, usually my classes are quite small, so it's very one on one. Um, so it's because it, it's a Saturday morning, I think. I, um, it, and so I'm able to sit with each student and you know, where are you taking these pieces today? And by the way, that we work on multiple pieces at a time because if I'm throwing down a bunch of, of stain and stuff on, on this one, it's gonna dry on the floor while I work on another piece on an easel. So I can be working on multiple pieces at a time. So we listen to music, people can talk to each other when they, whenever they want. Um, and then at the end of each, each class, we, we have kind of how do you feel about what you did today? Um, so there's a lot of um, conversation in the class um, and a lot of friendships that happen. Uh, so it's been really, really nice in that way. So you, you mentioned friendships. Um, so in addition to learning painting and drawing skills in your class, are there other kind of benefits that you've noticed with your students? Well, I think just, um, I'm just gonna point back to the last, the last class we had that I had here. Um, I had one student who was driving all the way from Brooksville, which is about an hour away, if I understand. And he's a young man, a, a young father, and his wife bought the class for uh, Christmas because he th she thought that he would enjoy this kind of mixture between uh, abstraction and realism, and playfulness, and and but also the the, the realistic aspect of photography and, and, and bringing all that all together. And my other um, student was a, um, she's a, a member of a local collective in Clearwater. Um, she's been painting for a really long time. And she took the class because she, she wanted to sort of explore new avenues and kind of, you know, push herself. And that's what this class is really good for. It's for people who are, who are ready to, you know, what else can I do with my work? What, what new techniques can I learn? But mostly, you know, what's, what are my hang-ups and how can I get past them? 
And so um, we were all able, we, you know, the age ranges were really diverse and it was really fun for all of us to, you know, kind of look at what each other were doing and, and get new ideas from each other. So um, there's a kind of thing that happens in the class where, you know, people are really looking at what each other are doing and, hey, I like that, so they, they do it to theirs. I mean, we have some of uh, the most amazing instructors here, so, so that's number one. You're, you're going to get an amazing uh, experience, and you're going to learn a lot from whoever you you take classes with here. Um, I know, you know, right now is especially a difficult time with with COVID and everything, but you know, I work here too. I'm the assistant curator, so I'm here daily, um, and I know about the precautions that we're taking and and successes that we've had since June. We've been open since June. And we have people coming in daily. And everybody is so observant and careful about washing their hands. I mean, that's, that's number one. Wash your hands all the time, right? Um, wear your mask. So we do that. We take temperatures. You know, we do everything that, this, that we can do per the CDC um, to provide a safe learning experience. Um, and then, you know, kudos to our, our um, maintenance and facility staff who are cleaning this place I, I don't, a couple times a day. You know, deep cleaning, and after every class, it's deep cleaned. So the bathrooms are deep cleaned. You know, so whatever we can do to provide a safe space, we're doing it. Um, so then, you know, we ask that obviously all our students follow the same guidelines and come in prepared to learn in a in in with masks on and and um, washing our hands. So don't be hesitant. We're <laughs> we're ready to we're ready to teach and ready to learn. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking some time today to tell us about your class. Um, we'll have a link under this video where students can uh, check out your class description and they can sign up. So again, thank you, Nathan. Yeah, thank you.